my facial expression should be enough of a review for White Boy Rick. Welcome to Car Review. We're going to talk about the new movie White Boy Rick. And oh my gosh, this movie, it's so sloppy. It's, it's, um, we're going to get into this film. Like, I know this is like a no spoilers thing and all, but like, like I'm not going to give you any spoilers, so I'm just, I'm going to really try to dissect this film for you because it's, it was just really weird. It was really, really weird. So, White Boy Rick, this is a movie about, uh, um, this, this is a, like, kind of like you know, street thug whose name was White Boy Rick, and, uh, it's about him being, like, one of the youngest kingpins, um, out of Detroit, and then kingpin turned the FBI informant. This is really bright. Um, like that premise sounded pretty cool to me, you know, because I guess this supposed to be like, you know, like 14, 15 at the time he starts, you know, doing this, peddling and stuff and everything. Um, I didn't know a lot about this movie other than the fact that it was a drama based off a true story and it started Matthew McConaughey. That's all I knew. And that was enough for me because I like Matthew McConaughey. Um, plus, I've been kind of on this like dramatic movie buzz since I saw Black Klansman and my car review was up for that so you can watch that after you're done watching this. Um, so yeah, I've been like looking for another good drama and, and everything. I was really looking forward to this movie. And it's, oh, I was just so disappointed because I think the biggest issue I had with this movie was the fact that it never really found the, the route it wanted to take with the story. The story never felt very coherent and I just, I wasn't invested. You know, the whole time I was... I was sitting there in the theater. I just felt like I was watching this movie, um, you know, which is like obviously watch movies and stuff. So like, you know, but like, you know, I never, I never felt like, you know, just, just into the story. I never felt like, you know, I was like, yeah, like let's, you know, what happens next? You know, like, let's keep going. Let's, you know, I want to know what happens. But I, no, it's just it all felt really boring, really just slow. And oh yeah, I mean this movie is moves at a snail's crawl. It's under two hours. And when a movie has like a runtime of like, let's just say two hours. When a movie has a runtime of two hours, that's not actual like film you're watching. Okay, that that includes the credits. So in a two hour film, you're really watching only about one hour, 55, 53 minutes. Because they have about five to, seven, five, five to seven minutes, excuse me, for credits. This movie was like an hour and like, 55 minutes long, so I was really, really only watching around one, one minute 47, one minute 48 of actual film. Let's just say 145 to 150. But gosh, this movie felt like it was like three hours long, and I, I left right as the credits started to roll because I was, just, I was ready to get out of there. But yeah, this movie, like I was expecting, like you know, a good, hard-hitting, well-grounded drama, and it's, it just, it wasn't that because like its story just went here and there and here and there and they never really brought it all back they just kind of told these little pockets of stuff that that went down throughout um rick's life you know and everything and uh, and like i was looking forward to seeing matthew mcconaughey in this movie and he's in the movie for a good portion but i just i wanted more i found his character to be um the most interesting um he's like uh he's like and He's like a gun seller, gun dealer, whatever you call that. And uh, um, he's like, he's legal, you know, he got the, he has license and all that stuff, but he also sells like, you know, like some legal stuff for making more money on the side and all that, you know. So there's that little bit of shady aspect that White Boy Rick gets uh, from his father and all that, which kind of puts him on to his path, you know. Yeah. But like, but like, yeah, I mean, he, he was there, but he was just kind of like second, third tier ish you know and I get it it's, it's it's called white boy Rick it's about it's about you know the thug the gangster white boy Rick you know that was his street name but I just I wanted more Matthew McConaughey I thought he could have uh, done a really great job if he had a more demanding role and you know every time he was on I felt the movie just moved better not necessarily faster but it just it just moved at a better uh, pace and all that um, and then, you know, when he's not on screen, they bring the focus back to White Boy Rick. And I can't 
even remember the actor's name because I just I wasn't very impressed with him. He was so monotone the whole time. And I don't know if that's just how um, he actually was in real life. I don't know if that's what the director told him to be, just be just be one singular, you know, you know, type guy the whole time, even in the toughest of situations. Um, but for me, that just didn't work. You know, there are parts where he's, like, getting roughed up, and he's getting, you know, shot at, he's getting yelled at, and, you know, he's, he's having a good time, or, you know, and stuff, and he's just, he's always just, it's, uh, he, he was calm, but it was almost, like, it was almost irritating how calm he was. Like, he just, he didn't show very much emotion, you know? And, and again, I, I'm not saying the guy that played White Boy Rick is a bad actor for not showing emotion, um, I thought he did a good job. It's just um, his actual character, the character of Rick, I did not like very much. Um, I will say, though, for acting standouts, though, um, Belle Howell, I think is her name, and she plays white boy Rick's sister and and Matthew McConaughey's uh, daughter. And uh, I thought she was fantastic. Uh, She actually stole the screen uh, every time she was on, um, she just has this great presence, and while she's not in the movie very much compared to, compared to other characters, um, at least for me, her character just, just worked. She just worked as this great, um, person that White Boy Rick has a good relationship with, and, and they just, they bounced off each other really great, and I really liked her, and I wish I could have saw more of her, and, uh, yeah, so that was really my standout. You know, it was, it was nice seeing, uh, Brian... Uh, Tyree Henry, I think is his name, and uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, but he's from uh, Atlanta. Uh, that you made with Donald Glover. It was really cool to see him in there. I was like, oh yeah, he's making the jump from TV to film. You know, right on, right on. Um, you know, and he, he he was cool too. He was a he was a supporting character, but I mean, it's good to see him every now and then. Um, yeah, like the movie is just it was really awkward and it's really actually sad and depressing and like. I get it that, like, you know, it's a drama, it's supposed to be, you know, dramatic, but, like, I don't know, this movie put me in such a weird state, even for, like, the first, like, ten minutes, where I was just, like, okay, I guess this is, this is where we're going, it's almost hard to explain, but, like, yeah, I was just so unenthused, and I think that's just a big part of, like I said before, I just, I wasn't invested, I just, I, frankly, I, I, didn't care. This movie did not sell me enough on the story, on the characters to really care for them, except for uh, uh, White Boy Rick's sister. I actually care what happened to her. And in the third act, um, it's where it gets really good. Um, third act is the best part of the film, in my opinion. And she has a few moments in there where uh, um, you really feel for her. And there, there's a moment with her and White Boy Rick and Matthew McConaughey, um, you know, father, son, daughter. There's this great dynamic between them that really it truly made me tear up because I, I just you see the dire situation that they're all in and you feel the emotion um, but it was really I, as I say that the third act was the best part you know it, it, it really shouldn't have been because that's when I feel the movie finally found its, its footing ish at least it you know was able to plant something even though it was still kind of lopsided but like you know, that's, the movie kind of did like a 180 on itself, where like, and I get it, it tells the story of White Boy Rick, and this movie progresses over like, I think three or four years, you know, and there's a lot to cover, so I mean, you gotta condense, but like, you know, they just, they really did a big flip, starting off the third act, and, uh, you know, to be, to tell the beginning of the end, and, and while that was the best part of the film, it, it was just kind of a jarring transition, you know, um, compared to everything else, um, but yeah, you know, it's, a uh, movie was also just kind of confusing, because, like, you know, I think they really wanted to sell that it's set in Detroit in the 1980s, so everybody kind of spoke a little differently, you know, and, uh, it was actually kind of hard to understand the dialogue at times, and if I were to watch this movie again, um, not in the theater, I could easily see myself having to, like, back it up, like, if I ever rented it, like, on iTunes or something, you'd probably have to back it up to understand some of the dialogue and stuff, and, uh, yeah, and, like, as I said just a few minutes ago, a few seconds or whatever, um, this movie would actually make me depressed, because, like, 
I was looking forward to it, and then it just it was what I wanted to be. But like also the story itself is just really, uh, really just weird. And I'm sorry for talking kind of fast right now. I, there's actually a bus on this side of me, and then uh, I guess you can see maybe. And then there's traffic on it. Kind of bumps too. But uh, um, yeah, white boy wreck. Put it bluntly, I mean, you could just pass on it, which is really sad to say, because as I said, I was looking forward to it. I thought this could even have a little bit of a, an Oscar chance at it, but it's just, I don't know. It, it's just, it, it just kind of went everywhere I didn't want it to go. Never really, never really stayed uh, true to what I thought it would be, you know? And uh, yeah, this drama just, this drama just wasn't very dramatic. Just because I didn't care. So, yeah, uh, White Boy Rick, movie you could skip on. Has a few good performances. Third act, you know, it's all right. But I mean, you know, you don't go to a movie to watch the ending. You know, you go because you want to, you know, escape from the actual real world and be, you know, into a fantasy world and told a lesson or, you know, given a little piece of history, you know, type stuff. And this movie, you know, just. You know, if I could condense everything down, if I could just watch the third act of the film again, you know, that'd be all right. But like, you know, you can't do that without getting through the, the slog fest of the, the first like hour and a half to like two hours, or whatever it was. I don't even know the runtime. I don't remember anything about this movie. I'm already forgetting it. And I just, I just walked out. Gosh, this movie irritated me so much. So yeah, <laughs> excuse me, white boy Rick. I'm getting over being sick. So. Um, but yeah, White Boy Rick, it's pretty terrible actually. Uh, if you like this video, comment, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, you know, see this movie if you want. If you don't, you will uh, be doing yourself a favor. Go see Black Clansman again. That's a good drama. If you are watching this movie because you want to know what a good drama is or if this is a drama you should see, don't see this one. Go see Black Clansman. That is <laughs> my review of White Boy Rick. All right, I'll see you in the next one.